Welcome to Caliban Command. Today we are covering the next two detachments, the First Company Task Force and finally the Unforgiven Task Force. This will be our last video in this series, and I've been holding off on it for a reason. I wanted to play around with the First Company Task Force a little bit more, and I'd hoped that I would get some better results out of it. That has yet to occur. The Unforgiven Task Force is our faction-specific one, and I have to say, after playing around with it a little, I like it more than I used to, but less than I feel like I should for our faction. The first company task force comes with classic Oath of Moment, but only for a single round. This grants full rerolls to hit and to wound rolls instead of hit rolls only. I don't view this as a worth worthwhile benefit myself, but I think that other detachments have stronger abilities that are more reliable. The Imperium Sword adds one to the attack's characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons, and once per game you can extend that effect to the bearer's unit. This is a case where I don't think the benefit is worth it. I think the second effect is too weak to warrant a once per game rule, and the primary effect too weak to consider as a enhancement for the bearer, to be perfectly honest. Fear Made Manifest is an interesting one to me. The Battle Shock ability doesn't affect monsters or vehicles, but this could be an interesting choice to shake up an objective. I think the second ability is actually useful here and is worth the once per game rule. Rights of War is a plus one to objective control, and once per game that can be extended to the unit rather than just the bearer. Iron Resolve provides a 5 of Feel No Pain, and once per game that can be extended to its unit, which to me is actually useful once again. I think that one's worth taking. The elephant in the room on this detachment seems to be the fact that the enhancements aren't really that great, and the detachment rule isn't amazing. The once per game buffs are lackluster for the most part. I'd personally rather see these get retuned to buff either the squad or the bearer better. I think if Sword of the Imperium would be a lot better geared if it added two to the bearer's attacks, or a flat plus one to the attacks of the unit rather than as a once per game ability. The enhancements seem to be a theme over function decision for me. And it harkens back to an issue I've seen a few times crop up, specifically in Dark Angels in the past, where we get rules that are fun and impactful to a story, but not necessarily to the tabletop state. Fear Made Manifest and Iron Resolve are kind of the outliers here, as they seem to carry the power needed to make them worth using. Armor of Contempt returns once again. One command point to reduce armor penetration by one for incoming attacks during your opponent's shooting or fight phase. Heroes of the Chapter, for one command point, one Terminator, Blade Guard, Stern Guard, or Vanguard Squad unit during your shooting or fight phase gets to add one to their hit rolls. Honestly, that's not amazing due to the restriction on units, but then it also has the ability to add one to the wound rolls as well, but only if the unit's below half strength. I don't think this stratagem is as impactful as it could be, and it's another functionality over story question. Terrifying proficiency during your fight phase after a Terminator, Blade Guard, or Stern, Stern Guard, or Vanguard unit has destroyed an enemy unit for one command point, you can activate this stratagem during your opponent's next command phase. Any enemy units within six inches are forced to take a battle shock test at a minus one penalty if they are below half strength, but do not take any additional battle shock tests that phase. Duty and Honor for one command point, one Terminator, Blade Guard, Stern Guard, or Vanguard Veteran Squad during your movement phase within control of an objective marker can hold an objective even if they leave the objective until it is manually taken by the opponent you have control over it. This isn't a bad one. I actually think the restrictions work quite well here. It allows those veteran units to be a little bit more mobile. The Orbital Teleportarium for one command point, a Terminator unit at the end of your opponent's fight phase can be removed and placed in reserve, and during your next turn it's redeployed using the Deep Strike ability. I think this is a fun one. It's good for repositioning a Terminator unit, which are usually quite slow in the first place. 
Legendary Fortitude after an opponent's unit has charged a Terminator, Blade Guard, Storm Guard, or Vanguard squad with an engagement range can reduce incoming damage by one from each attack. This costs one command point. This isn't a bad one. I just don't think the unit restrictions are strictly speaking necessary. I give the detachment a one out of eight personally. I think the stratagems are too narrow when it comes to targets. I think the enhancements are too limited. It's basically a narrative list, but I don't think it's a good choice for matches. The Unforgiven Task Force has a strange reliance on Battle Shock, which is why I'm not going to place it higher than what I'm going to at the end of this. Grim Resolve is a good narrative and functional ability, and it shows how the Dark Angels dig in rather than give up. The enhancements have a strange reliance on Battle Shock for functionality that I just can't quite shake on. I don't like how they function because of this. The Shroud of Heroes, for instance, gives the opportunity for a character to stand back up after destruction on a 2-up on a 6-sided dice roll, with 3 wounds remaining outside of engagement range, and if Battle Shock it instead changes to giving the character all their wounds back. Stubborn Tenacity adds 1 to hit rolls while the unit is attached to is below starting strength, and if Battle Shock it adds 1 to the wound roll as well. That's not a bad one, it just seems a little strange to attach Battle Shock as a requirement. The Heavenfall Blade adds 1 to the attack, strength, and damage of the bear's weapons, and that increases to 2 while Battle Shock. The Pendant of Remembrance, a Terminator Ancient, Primaris Ancient, or Blade Guard Ancient, with this enhancement, gives their unit a 6-up Feel No Pain that increases to a 4-up while Battle Shock. None of these are bad, it's just that the reliance on Battle Shock to get what seems to be the full effect that other detachments just have in their enhancements is a little strange. The stratagems, on the other hand, are honestly really solid here. Unforgiven Fury, for one command point during your shooting phase, you can grant the unit lethal hits, and if a unit in your army anywhere is Battle Shocked, that unit also critically hits on five. This is a really good stratagem if they want us to lean into Battle Shock because it doesn't require the unit that is benefiting from it to be Battle Shock. It just requires somewhere on the board for your Dark Angels to be Battle Shock. Armor of Contempt is still here, reducing armor penetration by one during your opponent's shooting or fight phases for one command point. Intractable allows a unit to shoot and declare a charge for one command point, even if it has fallen back. And it's activated during your movement phase, so it's at the start of your turn where you know where you're going to fall. Fire Discipline offers a large shooting buff in the form of granting assault, heavy, and ignores cover to a unit for one command point during your shooting phase. Grim Retribution during your opponent's shooting phase allows you to punish an enemy unit that is shot by returning fire from the unit that was targeted for one command point. Unbreakable Lines allows you to, after an opponent's unit is charged, declare a unit with an engagement range of the charging unit, and until the end of that turn, each time an attack targets a model in that unit, subtract one damage from that attack for one command point. I'd give the detachment a 2 out of 8. I think the reliance on Battle Shock weakens the enhancements, and I think the stratagems are a decent compensation for the core enhancements, but I don't feel like I can rank this higher right now until I play around with it more and see how much that compensation occurs. I think this is still stronger than the first company task force, and it's not terrible, but I sincerely hope we get some better options in our codex. We're going to talk about Hobby Town now. They are the sponsors of our channel currently, and they have a phenomenal array of painting tools. They have paints, they have models, they have everything that you could possibly need. Not to mention, their staff have always been super knowledgeable about anything that I've picked up there. They've made some recommendations for how I could improve my hobby flow. They've gone through the effort of helping me find a starting point in 40k in a faction that I love. I've played Dark Angels now for years, and that's largely thanks to them helping me figure out what faction fit me the best. The series as a whole has been a blast to work with them on. 
They've helped me find stuff for Age of Sigmar that I enjoy. They've ordered stuff in that I haven't had access to before. They've helped me find paint alternatives when they didn't have a Citadel paint that I needed. They've helped me find new board games to play. It has genuinely just been a really helpful crew to work with. They stock Army Painter, GW, Testers, Tamiya. They have Mission Models paints, which I got the pleasure of trying out recently and had a really great time with. They stock Gundam kits, anime kits of various types. They have the Vallejo paint line, which I use a lot when I do Gunpla to just really bring out some neat color combinations with. They have all kinds of fun in there and I genuinely cannot recommend the store enough. I hope you guys check them out. Even if you can't find a local branch, I hope you check out their online store at hobbytown.com.